We all, well, not all of us. I didn't really have any New Year's resolution, but many of us have New Year's resolutions related to fitness. But a lot of people need to focus on their uh, financial situation. Uh, people that do get themselves into problems, people that overspend during the Christmas period. Now, a lot of people say, look, you know, I'm going to, part of my New Year's resolution is to, uh, to make sure I put my finances, get my budget in, in shape for 2017. And I was talking to Neil Morrison. We're talking about the fitness uh, goals that people put or the resolutions they put into place. And the 70% of them uh, go out the window by the end of January. Well, to talk a little bit more about this and, and to improve your financial situation, I'm joined on the phone by Vancouver-based License Insolvency Trustee Lana Gilbertson. She is the Senior Vice President of MNP Limited. And she's got some great advice. Good morning, Lana. Good morning, Cash. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. A pleasure to talk to you. Uh, it's happy for me now because I haven't seen all my statements from my expenses <laughs> over the holiday period. But again, I think I was, and I said I think I was, somewhat cautious uh, mm-hmm. not to overexpend. But a lot of people do get themselves into financial situations uh, this time of year, especially when the bills start to come in. And we, we just talked to uh, Jordan Bateman. We talked about uh, from a taxation point of view, how much more money you're going to pay in uh, 2017. Uh, it's it's it costing so much more to uh, to try and keep your head above ground. Absolutely. There's no question. You know, and certainly this time of year at Christmas time, you know, it's so easy to get caught up in the in the spirit of everything and to stick to a budget. But uh, you're right. You know, many people are going to see their credit card statements roll in and, uh, and some are going to be concerned by what they're seeing. I know people in my business, uh, most will tell you that we see an increase in calls this time of year because sometimes, you know, the, with the passing Christmas season, it was just enough to send them over the edge. So a lot of people come looking for help this time of year as well. But when, when you look at that, this is, although uh, people do uh, ex- spend a little bit more during the holiday season, but you, can, you can, it's an accumulation, is it not, Lana, over the, the lack of financial responsibility throughout the year? And I, I'm not saying it's all because uh, of, of a poor uh, financial acumen. It, it's more like, you know, some people are, are just struggling. Rents have increased, uh, ICBC rates have increased, all of those uh, areas have increased. So uh, if people maintain their same lifestyle, it's costing a lot more. Mm-hmm. Well, and this is really key because you're right. I mean, there's, you know, the cost of living is going up. There are a lot of things that consumers don't have control over, but there are so many things that we do. And so it's really important to take a step back and look at those things that are within our control, such as discretionary spending, and really take a hard look at it and eliminate it if it's causing a problem or causing someone to go into debt. But when you talk about discretionary purchases, yeah. you know, let, let's say, for example, going to a concert, buying tickets to a mm-hmm. concert, going out, uh, eating dinners or something. That's what we're talking about. But let's Absolutely. talk about, about people that, for example, uh, carry their credit card debt and they're just trying to make the interest payments, the minimum payment each mm-hmm. and every time. They don't have the finances to go about paying down the principal. Well, they might, though. You know, again, I I think that, you know, when you get into a habit of using credit, um, you know, to get you through, I I think that there is there there is still the opportunity to cut back on spending. You know, the people that I work with uh, every day can, you know, consumers that come in for help with their debt, there's always areas where they can improve on their spending. But, you know, there's certainly extraordinary cases where, you know, if someone is unemployed, they just don't have enough money to meet their monthly expenses. But in the vast majority of cases, people have more control than they realize. The problem is they don't know where their money's going. And this is somewhat shocking in that, you know, never before have we had so much information available to us. We do most of our banking online. We have access to our credit card statements and our bank statements, but do we look at them? I don't know, but that's certainly a place to start is take, you know, take three or six months worth of your, of your spending and look at, add up what you're spending in various categories, such as housing, transportation costs, 
food, entertainment, recreation, all vacations, and and really take an honest look at where that money is going. It will be very eye-opening, and I guarantee you that everyone will find areas where they can cut. Lena, are we programmed to do that? And, you know, that that's my fear, and, and you're right. People mm-hmm. will take a quick glance at their credit card statement and look at the minimum payment, maybe pay a few dollars over the minimum payment. But they don't want to look at those mm-hmm. areas of, of spending. So and I talked about this uh, from, um, uh, no, I forget his name, uh, whether uh, you recall, nodebts.org. And we, we talked about yeah. this of, of, of training uh, people at an early age to be responsible in the financial yeah. environment. So we can program them at a very early age to start thinking this way because, you know, I have my young daughter and she's with me in the station right now. She's listening to Yolanda. And I got to tell you, her uh, daddy is an endless money tree of, of, of trying to do it and trying to uh, program them into being financially responsible. So, so back to my point here mm-hmm. of, of, of people uh, that are you know, our age and trying to get them programmed to think along what you were describing. We have to say no. But the problem is if we can't say no to ourselves, how do we say no to our children? And how do we model these uh, responsible financial behaviors? It's a really good question. And, and I think, you know, in part at the root of it, I'm afraid maybe easy access to credit, yes. you know, is that, you know, in a way it's a crutch in the sense that I don't have to be creative about how I'm going to be my, meet my expenses. I don't have to be resourceful because I can pull out a credit card and I can, you know, put the groceries or the, the hockey fees, whatever, on my credit card and I don't have to think about it. And, and as that problem becomes bigger and bigger, we become less and less prepared to look at it. It becomes so big and scary. But absolutely, I wholeheartedly agree with you. And and I think you're talking about Scott Hanna from the Credit Counseling Society. Yeah, that absolutely, it's really important to get financial literacy to our children and into schools. But, you know, I hate to say it, but if, if the adults around the kids are not modeling these behaviors and they can't say no, it's... I don't. I don't know if we're doing enough. Now there was a report uh, I was reading uh, online. I think it was a federal survey that's done saying more and more uh, people in Canada are not going to be able to deal with uh, their situation. We've heard this throughout the year in 2016, mm-hmm. where if there's a crisis in their life, there's no way that they are going to keep themselves uh, from uh, becoming insolvent. Yes. Yeah, I mean, certainly that is that is apparently almost half of Canadian families are living paycheck to paycheck and are in a very sort of they're on shaky financial ground. And although that certainly, uh, you know, that's certainly a, a, a very concerning situation. The great news is that there's a lot of opportunity to make improvements. And, and I think that there's very simple steps that people can take to make those improvements and get on more stable financial ground. But there's no question there is some work involved. Um, you know, it, it, it certainly comes down to, first of all, controlling expenses. And, and you know, one thing that we don't hear uh, discussed a lot is, you know, opportunities to increase income. I, I know that everybody, probably a number of, of Canadians feel like their salaries can't go any higher, but is there room to create some part-time work? Do you have older children in the home that can contribute something? And getting back to teaching responsible financial habits to children, when you've got older children living at home, they should be contributing because that's what they need to do as adults and it's important to get them used to it. But controlling spending is absolutely critical. Addressing debt problems, also very important. And, you know, if you're struggling with debt, go and see a professional who can give you some really good advice about the options. You can come and see a licensed insolvency trustee who's going to give you a free consultation and go through a number of of debt reduction or elimination solutions. Also, the Credit Counseling Society is a great resource. They give free advice as well. But there's there's a number of, of, of places to go for help if you're ready to do that. And here's, um, here's, here's, the, here, here's the point I want to make, and I, I want to draw an analogy to this. It's mm-hmm. someone that has a drug addiction problem. They never mm-hmm. want to face the fact that they have this 
particular health issue, they always want to be in denial that they actually have it. The same thing is for people that go in debt. So yeah. you, you would think someone that has uh, the addiction that they would actually seek help. But it's the same mm-hmm. here when, when people have this concern regarding their finances, they're reluctant, Lana, to seek help. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, we find that. We, you know, in my business, we really wish that people would come in sooner because the choices are greater. Uh, normally, by the time someone comes to see a licensed insolvency trustee, they are definitely insolvent. And it's very rare that I'm able to refer them outward because, you know, they're, they're solvent or they're, you know, they're capable of repaying their debts in full. But absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, I think that following the recession in 2009, we saw a, a huge increase in Canadian consumer insolvencies. And so the discussion has started, which is wonderful. But the irony here is that, you know, consumer debt levels have never been higher and, uh, and interest rates have never been lower. And, and so people have become more comfortable taking on debt for whatever reason. And I, I also see like a real disempowerment in, in people that I help, which is kind of sad. And again, I think fully uh, able to be changed within people is that, you know, people, they come in feeling like they had no choice and they have no control over the finances. The reality is that we all have infinite choices available to us. We do have control. But again, it, 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 it comes down to, you know, being motivated to, to make the changes, to ask for help, and then to stay the course. Once people start to see, uh, you know, being able to build some savings for a change as opposed to being in the red, you know, it's very, very motivating and very empowering. Well, savings, you know, that's another area because people don't regularly contribute uh, the way my era of people did to, to an actual savings account. If they're contributing to a savings account, Lana, it's usually to pay for that uh, mm-hmm. Mexico vacation that they're going to take at certain period of time. But they're not really saving for emergencies. So we often depend on, on those credit cards, for example, for those emergency situations. And the banks yeah. are so good at marketing there. Every time I go in and, you know, I, I make a point of trying to get in front of a teller as much as I can versus a, a machine uh, for, for accuracy. But, you know, every time I go in, uh, whether it's the same teller or not in the bank, they're always pushing, uh, have you heard about this? Would you like this? Mm-hmm. Can you, would you like to apply for this? Every single time. It's almost like they're, uh, they're program to ask every person that comes to that counter if they want some more credit. Absolutely. It's, it's not an easy environment for people who are, uh, you know, who are vulnerable financially and, and, and need to rely on or w- choose to rely on credit as a crutch. It's definitely, you know, the banks are not doing us any favors here. So if I had to come away from this, uh, this conversation with you, Lana, I would say the most important thing is reach out for help, even if you're getting anywhere near, uh, you know, falling below that uh, waterline. Absolutely. Help, all, you know, knowledge is power. And, uh, you know, you have nothing to lose by just going in and hearing what the options are and or getting some tips on how to reduce the debt yourself. Um, you know, I can't stress it enough. I know it's scary, but it's also confidential. No one's going to disclose the fact that you've been in to see a licensed insolvency trustee or even a nonprofit credit counselor. But, again, uh, if you can do something for yourself this year to put yourself on more fo- solid ground, definitely, you know, make the call and, and, and ask the questions and get the help. And, and know that, you know, keep at it. You can do this. You can make changes. You do have control of your financial situation. And that's the good news. Lana, you have a great year. I'm sure we're going to be talking to you again. And hopefully we can just it. get that message to people. Reach out for help if you're uh, in trouble. Thank you for having this topic. It's an important one. Take care, Lana. You take care, too. Bye-bye.